Hello, hi guys. This is C.A. Balakrishna from lecturepedia.in. How are you? Hope you people are doing well. Even I am fantastic. In the today's class, we will be revising audit of PSUs, public sector undertakings. This chapter, it has not changed from the old syllabus. The same chapter, it has been carried forwarded from the old syllabus to the new syllabus. PSU audit generally you can consider it as like a government audit. Now, what will be various categories of PSU? First of all, PSU means any undertaking in which government is involved. Okay, government has invested amount will be known as PSU public sector undertaking. Now, there are three types of public sector undertakings. First type of public sector undertaking is departmentally managed public sector undertakings. Like government, it will be having various departments. Best example, railways. In India, railway business, it is conducted only by the government. Now, this entire railway is being managed by a particular department, railway department. In the same way, for a postal, there is postal department. So, these are departmentally managed undertakings. That is the first type of public sector undertaking. Next, government companies. This is directly the government has invested 51% or more of the share capital of the company. Then such company becomes government companies. There are various government companies. Best example, NMDC, Sale, Bharat Petroleum, HP Petroleum. Okay, like this, there are various government companies even these government companies are also public sector undertakings next corporations set up under special act example sbi sbi is set up under a special act which is a corporation in the same way life insurance corporation lic is also a corporation which is set up under a special act in the same way uti unit trust of india all these are some of the examples of corporations which have been set up under special act in the same way you are having fci food corporation of india okay like this there are various corporations which are set up under a special act of parliament so you can bifurcate the public sector undertakings into three categories okay now the audit of these public sector undertakings will be conducted by cndg controller and auditor general of india whether Comptroller Auditor General of India, he himself will visit these companies and conduct audit. No. CNDG will be having a empanelment. Now, in the CNDG empanelment, chartered accountants, various chartered accountants will empanel themselves with CNDG. Now, CNDG will allot these government audits to chartered accountants. That is how it will happen. Okay. Now, CNDG is a organization that is set up by the government for the purpose of taking care of audit and accounts of the government entities okay now cndg the controller and auditor general of india this term it will be used for two purposes first of all the name of that organization is cndg and the head of the organization that is the head of controller and auditor general of india will also calling him as cndg only okay that position the name of that position is also cndg presently uh, cndg of our india is uh, chandra murmuru okay he is present cndg of india okay so the head of cndg will also be calling that position also as cndg only Okay, that is Comptroller and Auditor General of India. So, if you see audit of PSU, it is done by C and AG. Next. Now, C and AG is having, uh, C and AG is more powerful. The discussion with respect to C and AG is also done in Constitution of India. There are certain articles which will specifically discuss about CNDG, how CNDG will be appointed, what will be the powers of CNDG. All these aspects, they are discussed in Constitution of India. 
article number 148 149 150 and 151 these four articles of constitution they will be dealing with c and ag if you see article number 148 says that c and ag will be appointed by president of india and you cannot easily remove c and ag for removing c and ag there should be proven incapacity or misbehavior on the part of c and ag only if there is a proven misbehavior or incapacity on the part of c and ag you can remove c and ag okay and also for removal the procedure it is very much stringent you cannot uh, easily remove c and ag that much powerful c and ag is okay and article number 149 deals with duties and powers of c and ag and article number 150 says that c and ag will give advice to the president regarding the format of accounts that has to be maintained by various union and states okay union means there are union territories na and the central government also will be calling it as union and the state governments how these how to maintain their accounts the format of the accounts it will be advised by c and ag to the president and president will prescribe it to the governments okay and article number 151 c and ag audit reports will be submitted to president in case of central government and to governor in case of state governments okay so these are four articles of the constitution which are dealing with provisions of c and ag now organizations that are subjected to audit by c and ag now uh, starting we have discussed the categories of public sector undertakings all those public sector undertakings they are subjected to audit by c and ag only apart from those three there are there is another category Uh, that is also subjected to audit by c and ag so let us see what are the organizations that are subjected to audit by c and ag first of all all the government departments okay not organizations managed by government departments government departments they themselves will also get uh will also should also be audited so that audit of the government department will be conducted by c and ag okay all the government department audits will be conducted by c and ag and audit of public commercial enterprises now what will be coming under this public commercial enterprises that uh, categories of public sector undertakings we have discussed na government companies departmentally managed businesses all those they will be coming under public commercial enterprises commercial means they are working for for profit okay railways it is not not profit oriented it is profit oriented business in the same way postal is also profit oriented business okay and government companies they are also profit oriented businesses so all these are public commercial enterprises the audit of public commercial enterprises will also be done by c and ag why we are calling them as public commercial enterprises public means generally government means government money means public money government has invested in any of the company means that becomes a public company because public's money is invested into that company and it is working for profit so we are calling it as commercial so public commercial enterprises in the same way non commercial autonomous bodies best example of non commercial autonomous bodies uh national payment corporation of india npci okay basically upi is there na upi is managed by npci npci is a not for profit organization which has been set up by the government in order to improve technology in the payments sector so this is a non commercial autonomous body that has been established by the government now the audits of such non commercial autonomous bodies will also be done by c and ag and authorities or bodies substantially financed by government okay if at all any authority or body has been substantially financed by government okay government has given substantial amount of money to that organization or to that authority or to that body even such authority or body organization will be 
audited by C and AG. So these are the enterprises which will be audited by C and AG. Next, committees associated with public sector undertaking audits. Now, the audit of public sector undertakings, it will be done by C and AG. C and AG will give audit report. Now, there will be various public sector undertakings. There will be thousands of audit reports that will be given by C and AG. Now, these audit reports, they have to be submitted to president in case of central government and in case of state government to governor. Now, if you submit all these reports to the governor or to the, state, uh, to the president, they will not be having uh, that much amount of time to go through all the reports. So, these reports they will be first of all submitted to these committees now the committees they will summarize the reports and they will submit them to the governor or the president so these there are three types of committees basically in our syllabus each committee it will be doing a different type of activity okay just for the purpose of understanding i have told you that they will analyze and summarize the reports submitted by uh, C and AG, but this is just one aspect that will be done by the committees. There are various other functions that will be done by the committees. We'll discuss. So we are having three committees. One is Public Accounts Committee, Estimates Committee, Committee on Public Undertakings. Okay, PAC Estimates Committee, COPU. These are the three committees that we'll be discussing. First of all, duties of PAC Public Accounts Committee what duties this public accounts committee will do first of all the public accounts committee will check whether monies that were disbursed legally for the purpose to which they were applied okay let's say you have uh, the a particular government organization it has spent some 10 crore rupees on construction of road now in this the public accounts committee it will check you have spent 10 crores on construction of road now whether that 10 crores has actually been granted for the purpose of such construction of road or it has been granted for any other purpose and you have utilized it for construction of road okay this aspect will be checked by public accounts committee basically public accounts committee it will be uh, working with respect to government departments okay it will be having the it will be verifying the activities of government departments mainly okay the first function is verifying whether monies were legally disbursed for the purpose for which they were applied next the duty the second duty of this uh, public accounts committee is to check whether expenditure has actually been authorized or not okay expenditure incurred was authorized the government officials they cannot just spend how much of amount they wanted okay there should be proper authorization for spending the amount so whether the expenditure has actually been authorized or not next reapportionment has been made as per the provision made okay reapportion means allocation has been done as per the budget or as per the provision or not these three aspects with respect to government government departments will be verified by public accounts committee next estimates committee the name itself suggests estimates so estimates committee will be performing work with respect to estimates provisions budgets okay with respect to all these aspects estimates committee will be working see report economies improvements consistent with the policy underlying the estimate let's say a government department or a government organization has prepared a budget with respect to a particular policy now the estimates committee will go through that budget and will suggest whether any improvements can be made whether any economies economies means with the same amount of expenditure whether you can reap additional benefits okay such type of suggestions will be made by the estimates committee on the budgets okay suggest alternative policies okay you are spending thousand crores on this policy and you are incurring this much of benefit right now whether there is any alternate policy by spending some lesser amount you can uh, you know you can get the same amount of benefit or by spending same amount whether you can get a uh, higher amount of benefit whether there are certain uh, there are such alternate policies it will be suggested by estimates committee and whether money is laid out well within the limit okay whether the actual expenditure made is 
विद इन द बजट और द बजट हैज एक्सीडेड दैट विल बी चेकड बाई दस्टिमेट कमिटी एंड सजेस्ट द फॉर्म इन विच एस्टिमेट शेल बी प्रेजेंटेड टू द पार्लियामेंट ओके इट विल द एस्टिमेट कमिटी विल ऑल्सो सजेस्ट द फॉर्मैट इन विच दीज एस्टिमेट बजट हैज टू बी प्रेजेंटेड टू द पार्लियामेंट नेक्स्ट ड्यूटीज ऑफ कमिटी ऑन पब्लिक अंडरटेकिंग्स कोपू now this committee on public undertakings will perform all the functions that public accounts committee performs but public accounts committee that is the first committee public accounts committee performs these functions with respect to government departments right now the committee on public undertakings will also perform these functions but with respect to public undertakings okay see exercise financial control over public sector undertakings as public accounts committee that is the first committee has over the government departments okay the type of financial control that the public accounts committee is having over government departments so the same type of financial control the committee on public undertakings will exercise over public undertakings hope that is clear next examine reports and accounts that has been prepared by public undertakings and examine reports of cndg on public undertakings and exam examine autonomy efficiency business principles and prudential com uh, commercial practices of public undertakings that is whether this public undertakings basically the objective of public undertakings is to generate profits so whether they are conducting their businesses in those lines or not they will check efficiency of those public undertakings autonomy of those public undertakings okay and finally exercise such other functions allotted by the speaker to committee on public undertakings these are duties of committee on public undertakings next role of c and ag what role c and ag is having first of all as i have already told you the reports that cndg will prepare will be submitted to the committees and committees will work on these reports so the reports his reports that is the cndg reports forms the basis of committees workings committee will work on these reports based on the findings of these reports and scrutinizes notes submitted by ministries to committees and checks the correctness of the facts and figures now ministries the government ministries they will submit notes with respect to their activities okay figures and facts with respect to those activities will be submitted to the committees now cndg will help the committees to scrutinize the reports that have been su submitted by the ministries in the same way committees will have to prepare summarized reports and present them in the parliament right cndg will help committees in preparing these reports also okay so in this way cndg will support the committees this is role of cndg with respect to committees next basic elements of psu audit basically there are three elements in the psu audit first element is parties involved how many parties will be involved in in C in cndg audit that is psu audit not only psu audit in any type of audit generally three parties will be involved first party is auditor that is the person who is conducting the audit second party is responsible party or responsible person that is the client you will be calling the client as responsible party third one intended users in case of government audits intended users will be government and in case of general normal audits intended users will be respective shareholders or the public so these are the three parties that will be involved in audit that is the first element parties involved second element subject matter criteria and subject matter information what is this subject matter criteria subject matter information see subject matter i will explain this with the help of an example subject matter subject matter means the matter that you are going to audit let's say financial statements here financial statements become subject matter next criteria criteria refers to the benchmark or the framework in our example criteria can be indas or accounting standards that is the framework as per which you have prepared this financial statements so financial statements are subject matter indas or accounting standards or criteria now auditor by comparing or the management how to prepare the financial statements with these accounting standards or 
auditing uh, indian accounting standards once financial statements are prepared as per the criteria then such subject matter becomes subject matter information okay so subject matter information in our example will be financial statements prepared as per the accounting standards or indian accounting standards will become subject matter information okay that is the second element subject matter criteria subject matter information next types of engagements there are two types of engagements first one is attestation engagement attestation engagement means in attestation engagement management will prepare financial statements as per indian accounting standards or accounting standards and management will present subject matter information to the auditor now the auditor he has to just verify the subject matter information this type of audit is known as attestation function in attestation function subject matter information will be presented to the auditor next direct reporting engagement in case of direct reporting engagement management will not present any subject matter information instead auditor he himself has to compare subject matter with criteria and he has to give his report example would be uh, auditor he will give a report on internal control over financial reporting so he will check how the controls are working around the financial reporting process now for this purpose management is not giving any subject matter information to the auditor okay there is subject matter in the organization that is there are internal controls around the financial reporting process auditor will observe those subject matter and he will give his report so this is known as the internal control over financial reporting process that report he will uh, that reporting aspect is known as direct reporting engagement okay the example for direct reporting engagement could be that so that those were three elements of psu audit next principles of psu audit there are you know, basic principles like uh, you know ethics and independence has to be followed professional judgment must be maintained professional skepticism should be there audit team should be there properly okay certain basic principles are there you can just go through them next powers of c and ag first of all obviously c and ag is having power to appoint auditor of public sector undertakings that is appointment of statutory auditor next c and ag is also having power to conduct or to order for a supplementary audit what is meant by this supplementary audit generally after the normal audit has been conducted after seeing that audit report if the c and ag feels that the audit was not conducted properly then within 60 days uh, within 60 days of such a receipt of such audit report c and ag can order for a supplementary audit okay this supplementary audit will be ordered when the cnag feels that the original audit was not conducted properly there were certain lapses in the original audit that is supplementary audit next coming to test audit now when cnag can order for uh, test audit see whenever the cnag wanted to check whether the audit was conducted properly or not okay to check the aspect of whether the audit was conducted properly or not test audit can be conducted by c and ag okay that is the difference between supplementary audit and test audit next types of psu audits generally there are five types of psu audits that we will be discussing here in this chapter first one is financial audit compliance audit performance audit comprehensive audit and proprietary audit okay so these are the five types of audits that we'll be discussing here in this chapter starting with financial audit as we all, uh, all already know financial audit is audit of historical financial statements wherein the auditor will provide opinion on the financial statements that is historical uh, that is a financial audit okay next compliance audit now what is meant by compliance audit in this compliance audit there will be a subject matter and there will be criteria auditor will check whether subject matter is complying with the criteria example let's say this compliance audit it can be conducted 
either individually or along with financial audit or along with performance audit let's say for example auditor has been appointed to check whether entity is complying with all environmental laws now here there are certain environmental laws auditor is checking whether the organization is complying with all these environmental laws this is compliance audit okay here environment laws are the criteria you are checking whether organization is complying with these environmental laws or not that is compliance audit now i have told you that compliance audit can also be done uh, along with financial audit let's say for example in the companies act 2013 there are various requirements let's say for example caro requirement and uh, auditor has to check uh, auditor has to report whether there is any disqualification on the aspect of the uh, whether any disqualification on the director okay there are various requirements as per companies act that has to be reported by the auditor there is fraud reporting okay so this reporting aspects they will also be coming under compliance audit here auditor is doing this along with audit of financial statements okay auditor is conducting financial audit along with financial audit auditor is also checking whether organization is complying with this companies act 2013 or not so this is example of conducting financial audit along with compliance audit okay so that is compliance audit so in compliance audit you will check whether the entity or the okay or the subject matter is complying with the criteria that is compliance audit next performance audit now this performance audit generally it will be conducted to verify whether the government programs government policies are working properly or not whether the desired results of the government policies okay government they will be introducing they will be coming up with various policies and various schemes okay what is the result whether they are working properly or not to check that performance audit will be conducted okay now in the performance audit there will be three aspects that will be checked we will be calling them as three e's what are those three e's economy efficiency effectiveness first of all we'll understand what is meaning of these terms economy economy means achieving a particular task with as much as lower cost as possible okay spending least amount to achieve a particular objective is known as doing particular uh, doing that particular activity in most economical manner that is known as economy okay that aspect will be checked in economy next efficiency efficiency means there could be two ways in which you can measure efficiency okay achieving the given amount of output with as much as lesser resources as possible that is one way or achieving maximum output with given amount of resources this is known as efficiency next effectiveness effectiveness will be used to measure how much of your goal how much of your objective has been achieved let's say for example you are preparing for ca final exams okay you are preparing for both the groups of ca final exams you have given your examinations and you were able to clear both the groups then it will be said that you were effective okay because you have achieved your complete goal let's say for example unfortunately you are able to clear only one group then you are 50 percent effective you are able to achieve 50 percent of your goal let's say for example it should not happen okay you were not able to clear the exams then you are not effective because you have not achieved your goal so this is effectiveness so in case of performance audit you will check economy efficiency and effectiveness now in efficiency aspect what points the auditor will verify auditor will see whether there are sound procurement practices okay procurement means you will be uh, sourcing various raw materials for uh, you know implementing a particular program or for uh, doing a particular activity or for producing a particular product you will be sourcing raw materials 
or you you might be sourcing any of the uh, services so whether proper procurement pra practices are there or not that you will be verifying in case of efficiency okay you should procure from those vendors who are offering high quality and low price okay there will be certain standards with respect to procurement aspect that you will verify next proper protection and maintenance of resources once you have once you have purchased them once, once you have procured them you need to properly store and maintain them until you use them in the activity so whether they are uh, the the resources have been properly protected and maintained by you or not even this will be verified next efficient use of human financial and other resources whether you are efficiently using human financial and other resources that are available with you efficiency means in the most useful manner okay you should not you uh, waste any of the resources okay whether you are using them efficiently or not next use of efficient operating procedures okay the operating procedures should be most efficient okay and objectives of public sector program are met cost effectively okay with as much as lower cost as possible these five aspect aspects you will check with respect to efficiency what are those five aspects procurement maintenance proper usage and proper operating procedures and finally the objective need to be met in a cost effective manner next regarding effectiveness what aspects will be verified by the auditor see effectiveness is related to whether the final objective has been achieved or not now in order to achieve the final objective first of all there is, there should be goal that is there should be objective and to achieve that objective some resources should be there so whether objectives and means 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 resources to achieve those objectives are consistent with the policy or not okay for each policy for each program there will be different objectives different goals and different resources to achieve those goals so whether the objective and the means to achieve that objective are consistent with the policy or not that the auditor has to see next extent to which results have been achieved okay how much results how much objective has been achieved that you will verify next assess and establish with evidence that the social and economic impact was due to policy or other causes see let's say for example government has come up with a policy to eradicate poverty poverty eradication program now auditor has to check how much of poverty eradication has taken place because of this poverty eradication program and how much of the result was due to other causes okay like in the country the private people they will be doing businesses and they will be offering jobs because of them also poverty eradication might have happened so how much is uh, how much can be attributed to the government policy and how much can be attributed to other causes that auditor need to examine and identify factors inhibiting satisfactory performance okay what factors what actions have led to achievement of the objective and whether in this process you have complied with laws and regulations okay all the aspects of laws and regulations have been complied with or not and assess effectiveness of program on individual components these aspects you will verify with respect to effectiveness of a program or a activity or a organization next planning the performance audit there are general uh, you know planning steps that you can just go through them next propriety audit what is propriety audit i'll just tell you with an example let's say uh, there is some amount okay let's say some 1 lakh rupees this 1 lakh rupees is given to you by some other person and he told you he, you can spend this 1 lakh rupee uh, okay as much as you wanted i will not ask you again so how you will spend this 1 lakh rupee you will spend it as you like right because this amount it doesn't belong to you it is belonging to some other person and he has given to you so you will you are not having any sense of ownership for this amount 
so you will spend it like anything but let's say this one lakh rupees it is your hard earned money it belong to you okay you have worked hard to earn this one lakh rupees now how you will spend this one lakh rupee you will spend this one lakh rupee cautiously right so why you are spending cautiously because there is a sense of ownership that you are feeling that sense of ownership is known as element of propriety okay if you are having sense of ownership then your behavior will be different okay so now in the government audit why this propriety element uh, has come because the amount that the government officials spend okay the activities that the government officials uh, introduce they are on behalf of public okay the government money that officials are spending is belonging to the public so the government officials has to exercise propriety element while spending this amount so auditor he will check this propriety aspect so the pro propriety aspect of the activities or the programs will be verified on three elements see propriety stands for verification of transaction on the test of public interest okay the first element is test of public interest whether the amount has been utilized in the best interest of the public or not and commonly accepted customs and standards of conduct what are commonly accepted customs and standards of conduct let's say you wanted to purchase a particular land or not land you wanted to purchase certain material now a particular vendor is selling that material for 1 lakh rupees the same material is being sold by another vendor for 2 lakh rupees now tell me from whom you will buy the material obviously from the person who is selling it at lower cost so this is known as commonly accepted custom or standard of conduct okay how a normal human being a human being will behave in in a particular situation that is known as standard of conduct okay so propriety audit stands for testing each and every transaction on the uh, test of public interest commonly accepted customs and standards of conduct okay now general principles of propriety there are certain five principles of propriety element what are they first of all expenditure should not be prima facie more than the occasion demands okay how how much expenditure the occasion demands you should spend only that much of amount okay expenditure should not be more than the occasion demands next authority should not sanction the amount which will accrue to his own benefit okay authority should not authorize any expenditure should not authorize any amount which will benefit to him uh, to himself okay next funds are not for uh, not for benefit of particular person or group of person again the funds that the government utilize the or the programs that the government comes up with they should not benefit only for certain group of people they should be useful for a huge uh, okay uh, all the people in the country so funds are not for the benefit of particular person or not for particular group of person okay this is the third element of property next apart from agreed remuneration no other revenue is kept open to the officials okay apart from the remuneration that the government gives to the officials no other source of revenue in the form of bribes sh should be kept open to the uh, government officials okay only remuneration should be given to them and no other avenue should be kept open to the public officials and every official would exercise same vigilance in respect of expenditure as a person of ordinary prudence would, would exercise okay every government official should exercise the same amount of vigilance as he would exercise in case of his own money okay the same amount of vigilance he needs to exercise while expending while spending the public amount also these are the five principles of propriety audit next provisions related to propriety element are pre present in companies act 2013 if you see section number 143 subsection 1 there are six aspects that you need to inquire into 
that is whether revenue uh, whether personal expenditure has been charged to revenue account whether transactions represented merely by book entry or prejudicial to the interest of the entity whether loans and advances given by the entity or prejudicial to the interest of the entity like this there are six points that you need to inquire in case of companies all these six points the underlying the, there is underlying property element in all these six points of verification as per section 143 subsection 1 in the same way supplementary audit and test audit the reason the underlying element behind sub supplementary audit and test audit is also property element next section 148 regarding maintenance of cost records and cost audit there is also certain property element involved in it and additional information in part 2 uh, schedule 3 of uh, you know schedule 3 basically deals with the format of financial statements and proprietary elements are also involved in certain clauses of coro 2020 like clause 3 4 8 9 okay i have given the list of clauses in which a certain amount of property element is involved now there are certain problems associated with property audit what are those problems first of all the term property is a moral term moral term means it will change based on time okay a particular concept which is moral in society today might not be moral after some 10 years or 15 years in the same way a particular activity which is most common which is moral which is accepted in society in a particular society might not be accepted in another society so this property element is a moral term which has to be understood by referring to the existing society uh, existing society this is one of the problem in case of property audit see moral term to be understood by reference to concept of morality accepted in the society okay a particular activity which is moral in one society might not be moral in another society okay next element of subjectivity see in this property aspect subjectivity is involved let's say for example spending 1 lakh rupees to acquire a particular property is okay for one person but other person might feel that it is costly because based on his view spending 1 lakh for that property is okay but for other person based on his view spending 1 lakh rupees is costly so the property aspect involves subjective element but auditor has to conduct his audit objectively that means based on facts but conducting audit objectively in case of this property audit becomes difficult why because property audit involves subjective element okay judgment of the auditor must be objective so in order to tackle with these problems c and ag has developed certain norms of property okay with the help of these norms of property auditor has to conduct the property audit next coming to comprehensive audit comprehensive audit as the name itself suggests it will deal with various aspects of a program or activity comprehensively it will conduct the audit now in this comprehensive audit what issues will be examined firstly compare overall cost uh, overall capital cost with the planned cost okay whether the actual capital cost is as per the plan or it has exceeded the plan next whether a uh, planned rate of return has been achieved or not okay has the planned rate of return has been achieved or not and whether planned outputs have been achieved or not okay planned production or operational outputs have been achieved or not these three first three points they are comparing with the budgets okay whether your planned rate of return whether actual capital cost is as per the budget or the planned capital cost or not whether planned output has been achieved or not these are the first three points next next three set of points these nine points we will remember them in the form of three sets okay first three sets completed next three sets the auditor will examine whether there are adequate cost control measures 
okay cost control measures means whenever cost is increasing whether there are adequate measures to reduce that cost next whether there are adequate purchase policies and whether there is adequate system of repairs and maintenance these three aspects cost control measures purchase policies repairs and maintenance these three you remember as one set and finally auditor will examine whether sound project formulation and execution systems are there or not this is with respect to implementation aspect policies and procedures that are being followed next or procedures economical and effective okay the procedures that you are following for implementing the a particular activity or economical that means uh, being conducted in a less cost and effective the procedures that you are following will be able to achieve the results okay whether the procedures are economical and effective or not you will verify and finally any poor or insufficient project planning these are the nine aspects that you will examine in case of a comprehensive audit okay by this we have completed revision of audit of PSU and you can download this chart from the link that i will be providing you in the description and if you want to purchase our classes you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can place your order i'll be winding up this video as of now take care bye bye see you